Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series over the principles of business management. Now in this video specifically we're going to not only look at define what management is as a discipline but such things as the four functions of management. These are very critical in making yourself be a very functional manager. Now these skills can be used to work more successfully on team projects as well as success in different future endeavors. The functions of management aren't just for the workplace application. They can also be used for your personal goals as well in life. So hopefully as I discuss those four functions, you'll be able to apply those to different areas in life and you'll think back to those and like, oh, you know what? These aren't just for business. So let's go ahead and jump on into management. Now management can be loosely defined as the art of getting things done through your people. Now, understanding the art of management prepares you not only for the current environment, but for the constant change that you will inevitably face in the workplace. Now, managers operate within a collective called the organization. This organization is simply a group of people who are going to work together to achieve some specific purpose. Now, there are many goals that must be achieved by the organization, but that's another discussion just know that within organizations we have managers. Now employers place a lot of value in effective managers. Good managers create value through the multiplier effect. This multiplier effect is their influence on the organization is multiplied far beyond the results that can be achieved by just a single person acting alone. These exceptional managers are in high demand and several do quite well with respect to financial compensation compared with most workers within that same given organization. The term management, we hear it all the time. Let's look at a very specific definition. And the way that we are going to define management is that pursuit of organizational goals efficiently and effectively by integrating the work of all the people through planning, organizing, leading, and controlling the organization's resources. There are some very key terms here that build up what is an effective manager. And some of those that I want to call out right away are that of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Those are directly from the definition. Now these are going to make up the management process. We'll talk about that here shortly. But take away those as well as two other words from the definition I just gave you and that would be efficiently and effectively. So to be efficient this means to use your resources such as the people and then organization raw materials and money to use those resources wisely and cost effectively. There's the word effective again. Now to be effective this means to achieve results, to make the right decisions and successfully carry them out so that they achieve the organization's goals. Now, we can study management, we can practice management. Well, if we do that, what are some of those rewards? Well, if we're studying management, here are several rewards I want to discuss. You are going to learn how organizations work and how the people in them make the various decisions in that organization. In study, another studying reward that we see is that you're going to be able to understand the pressures that managers deal with and how they will best respond to you. Studying management also gives you an understanding of how to best get along with your coworkers, especially with regards to teamwork, cultural differences, conflicts that are always going to arise in an organization, the stress that comes along in your organization, and communication. And then studying management is also going to give you a window into how your personality, your emotions and values and perceptions can influence your behavior at work and how you can be a more successful employee within your organization. Now we can study it, but just studying something doesn't do much for us in life if we don't put that into practice. So let's take a look at those 
rewards from practicing these management skills. You can derive satisfaction from a job that's well done, both for yourself and for the employees that you are managing. Another one here is that projects will challenge you and make you a better manager. Consistently doing an excellent job may lead to promotions and to higher levels of management within your organization. When we practice these skills, we can see that successes can be showcased and celebrated, especially when you are seeking promotion inside or even outside of your organization. And then lastly, a mentor. A mentor is an experienced person who provides guidance to someone new to the work world. Now over 80% of workers who had a mentor have stated that having a mentor helped them advance in their careers. So think about practicing putting all these skills into practice so that you can become a mentor and help others in your organization. Now, I mentioned these four important words from the definition I gave you earlier. Planning, organizing, leading, controlling. Together, managers perform what's known as the management process, also known as the four management functions that you see here. All of these functions affect each other. They're all ongoing, and they're going to be performed simultaneously. We'll take a look at the first management process or function here in the management process, and that's planning. Planning is defined as setting goals and deciding how to achieve those goals. The other function here, organizing. Now this is defined as arranging tasks, people, and other resources to accomplish work that needs to be done. Leading is defined as the motivating directing and otherwise influence of people to work hard to achieve the organization's goals. There is a big difference between managing and leading. You will find that people in organizations are sometimes called a leader um, or they'll be called a manager, but there's a difference between what leading is and what managing is. So make sure you understand that. Someone can be a manager, but they may be a poor leader. All right, then the last function is that of controlling. And controlling is defined as monitoring performance, comparing it with the goals, and then taking corrective action as needed. Now we'll move on to talk about levels of management. This is a pretty common business concept, but I want to address it here. In an organization, you will see that there are definite different levels of management. Traditionally in business, we only consider the top three. But in more modern business, we have come to see that there's actually typically four levels of management in an organization. So we see that we have the top managers at the very top, and then all the way to the bottom we have our team leaders. So I'm going to discuss these a little bit more in depth there. Now, top managers typically determine the overall direction of an organization. They're going to make the long-term decisions about the overall direction of the organization and establish the objectives, policies, and strategies for that organization. And they're going to pass information down to the top managers um, who are going to have titles um, or who are going to then implement those policies and plans of those top managers above them. And they're going to supervise and coordinate the activities of the first line managers below them. And then those first line managers, you're also going to hear them called uh, direct task managers sometimes, but these first line managers make short term operating decisions and they're going to direct the daily tasks of non managerial personnel. Then at the bottom there, this newer term of the team leaders they are small groups of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose. A team leader is just going to be a manager who's responsible for facilitating team activities towards achieving key results. Now, team leaders may not have authority over their team members in the way that a manager does, but they are expected to provide guidance, instruction, and direction to the other team members. They're going to coordinate team efforts, they're going to resolve conflicts on that lower level, and then they're going to represent the team 
to those first level managers and to make decisions in the absence of consensus. Now, some of the titles that you'll hear with these like top managers are going to be like the chief executive officer or the chief operating officer. These executives must be future oriented, dealing with uncertain, highly competitive conditions. You can always remember that these managers are at the summit of the management pyramid. Now, titles that you might see with these middle managers are going to be such titles as a plant manager, uh, a regional manager, or a district manager. These managers often have those high touch jobs which deal with people rather than computer screens or voice response systems and can directly affect employees, the customers inside and outside of the organization, as well as suppliers. Now with our first line manager, some of the job titles you might see for this level of manager is going to include like a department head or a foreman um, or even a supervisor. Now supervisor is the name often given to those first line managers in general. So hopefully you understand this pyramid and these levels of management and you can think to your organizations that you've worked in the past or are currently in and can be able to easily identify those different levels of managers, people that are in those positions and maybe have a better understanding of what they do and how we ha we sometimes hear this called uh, top-down management. So as I said, this top-down managers come up with the goals and objectives and then as it trundles down that pyramid, that's where the implementation comes in. How it's going to be done, when it needs to be done, and who's going to do exactly what. Now, there are two general areas of management. And there are the functional managers, and then we have general managers. A functional manager is responsible for just one organizational activity only, such as a director of finance or a vice president of production. Whereas a general manager is responsible for several different organizational activities, like an executive vice president who's over several departments, that's what would be considered a general manager. Organizations are going to be classified according to the purposes for which they're formed and we see and we can determine that there are three types of organizations that are out there. The for-profit, the non-profit, and the mutual benefit. These are the three types of organizations. Now for-profit are organizations that are formed to make money, or profits as we, we know the term, by offering different products or services to those people who need or want those products or services. Now the purpose of a nonprofit organization is to offer services to clients not to make a profit. An example of this type of organization where it offers services to clients but they're not looking to make a profit, believe it or not, hospitals follow under the term not profit or the label of not profit organization. I know that might be hard to believe but they do follow as only offering services to clients not to make a profit. Colleges are under this category as well, as well as social welfare, social welfare or agencies. Now, mutual benefit organizations are voluntary collections of members whose purpose is to advance members' interests. An example of these would be like political parties, uh, farm co-ops or farm cooperatives, labor unions, and trade associations. Managers generally do the same types of things regardless of the type of organization but the measure of success for that organization can be different. Such as, you know, in a for-profit, we one way that we're going to get measured is how much profit do we generate? Or if we are in a non-profit, how many clients were served? Now, there are different types of managerial roles. And I want to bring up a very famous uh, individual in the field of management that ties directly to this, and that's Henry Mintzberg. And Henry Mintzberg was a management scholar who concluded that managers play three different roles in their work, the interpersonal, the informational, and the decisional roles. Now, in their interpersonal roles, managers are going to interact with people inside and outside of their work units. Interpersonal roles include figureheads, leaders, and liaison type activities. Now, in their informational role in an organization, managers receive and communicate information with other people inside and outside of the organization. Exactly how it sounds. Informational roles are going to include like monitors, disseminator of information, and a spokesperson. 
And in their decision roles, managers use information to make decisions to solve problems or take advantage of opportunities. I won't talk about SWOT analysis, but um, in your studies and hopefully in your understanding of business in general, you understand the SWOT analysis and in there we have opportunities for the organization and that's where in this decision role you are going to, once you've identified those opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities for the organization. Now the four decision making roles are going to be the entrepreneur, the disturbance handler, resource allocator, and negotiators. Increasing diversity and globalization are likely to impact the roles that managers must play for the organization. To remain competitive in a global market and increase competition, managers now have to integrate a workforce that is much more diverse and globalized than ever. Technology and social media have greatly changed the roles of the managers since Mintzberg's classic study that was conducted back in the 1960s. A lesson learned here is that being uh, good communicators, being excellent time managers, and being able to quickly and effectively multitask are key to being a successful manager, making sure you understand these roles and can perform them effectively. Now let's talk about the skills that managers must possess because effective managers need to understand and possess a variety of skills and how much they use those skills depends on what level of management they reside. So there are three principal management skills that I want to talk about here and those three skills are going to be the technical skills, conceptual skills, and human skills also sometimes called or referred to as soft skills or professional skills. Technical skills, these are going to consist of job specific knowledge that's needed to perform well in a specialized area or field. Having technical skills seems to be most important at the lower level of management to make sure that objectives are being met through the daily activities. Conceptual skills consist of the ability to think analytically, to be able to visualize an organization as a whole, and understand how the parts all come together. Conceptual skills are particularly important for those top level manager. And the human skills consist of the ability to work well in cooperation with other people in order to get things accomplished. Human skills are often thought of as soft skills and, and more currently they're also being termed as professional skills. And these are just the ability to motivate, to inspire trust, and to communicate with others effectively. Human skills are necessary for managers of all levels and developing them may be an ongoing lifelong effort by the individual. Now that you know the skills that are needed, try to think of a manager you had um, who possessed one or two of these skills, but not all of these. Can you not see a possible negative effect to the business that they were in and the effect that they might have had negatively on that organization? That's why when you are in a role, you need to realize that you need to be able to uh, possess and be able to employ these skills effectively. Now, let's talk about some of the most valued traits in managers. Now, one of these very important traits is that of the ability to motivate and engage others. You must have this ability to be able to help keep others positive and wanting to work towards the goals. Ever, another very important trait that we see in managers is the ability to be able to communicate well. Another trait that you might not really realize is that of bringing work experience. And not only just bringing your work experience into the environment, but any work experience outside of the U.S. can be very beneficial in a globalized market. And then the last trait I want to talk about is that of being energetic. High energy levels to meet the demands of global travel and how we see business now is in a 24-7 world. There are many challenges to being an exceptional, effective manager. And I'm going to address seven of those now. And the first one I'll talk about is managers need to manage for a competitive advantage. They need to be able to stay ahead of their rival. 
Now, a competitive advantage is the ability of an organization to produce goods or services more effectively than its competitors do, thereby being able to outperform them in four specific areas. We need to be uh, much more responsive to our customers. Now, the first law of business is take care of the customer. If the customer is not happy, they're going to become someone else's customer. Innovation is another one of these areas. Find ways to deliver new or better goods or services, and this is just, you know, being innovative. Quality. Make improvements in quality, and this has become an important management idea. Don't become complacent. Always make sure that you can improve your quality. And then be efficient. Companies try to produce goods or services using as few people as and as few materials as possible. This will affect your bottom line as well. The combination of these four will give you that competitive advantage over your competitors. The next challenge for being an exceptional manager is managing for information technology. We can think of this as dealing with the new normal. Now, The internet is the global network of independently operating but interconnected computers linking thousands upon millions of smaller networks around the world. Another area we in dealing with the information technology or IT is an e-commerce or electronic commerce what's uh, tr traditionally known as. With e-commerce this is the buying and selling of services over computer networks and it has simply reshaped industries and how businesses do work do their business. IT has made possible e-business using the internet to facilitate every aspect of how we traditionally run our business. Now, implications of information technology include how managers will need to deal with e-communications such as email, texting, social media, and we're dealing with this all the time. Now, There will be challenges in decision making as a result of more and more data as we are using more e-business and uh, as more information gets collected we need to find effective ways of utilizing that information uh, just taking this raw data and turning it into useful facts so we can use those in such things as projections and uh, trends in a business or products the raise or rise of AI or artificial intelligence is going to create more automation in our general workforce another implication that we should look at is how Organizational changes will result in shifts in structure, jobs, goals, management, including that of telecommuting and the use of video conferencing. And there will also be an increased emphasis on knowledge management. Systems and practices that are used to increase the sharing of knowledge and information throughout an organizational and collaborative computing. Uh, we're using state-of-the-art computer software and hardware to help everyone work better together. Now with challenge three, this has been around and it's it's not going anywhere. This is managing for diversity. Some managers have been able to effectively grasp this and some have not. Over the coming years, the mix of American racial or ethnic groups will change considerably, becoming more diverse. The challenge to our modern managers is to maximize the contribution of these diverse employees. To be competitive, big businesses need to be global. And to do that, we have to be diverse. The next challenge, challenge four, is managing for that globalization. When you're dealing business outside the US, you need to understand the cultures and the laws in those areas. Verbal expressions and gestures don't have the same meaning to everyone throughout the world. Not understanding cultural differences can affect how well organizations manage globally. Globalization has leveled the competitive playing fields between industrial and emerging market countries. Now let's take a look at the fifth challenge and that is managing for ethical standards. With the pressure to meet sales, production, and other targets, managers can face ethical dilemmas. Ethical behavior is a very important part of doing business in the 21st century. There are lots of checks and balances in place to make sure that we are acting ethically. You'll 
uh, no such terms as whistleblowers and you might have a, a whistleblower policy in place if not when you go into a place you might want to look at implementing one of those you also need to look at um, ethical practices and regulations and rules that are in place wherever you're doing business now let's take a look at the next challenge and that will be managing for sustainability the crises of destabilizing climate change and rising competition for energy have brought the issue of being green to increased prominence. Sustainability, I'll define that here, um, sustainability is really just uh, the economic development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to be able to meet their own needs. Alright, so challenge seven, our last challenge that I want to discuss is a challenge for happiness and meaningfulness. It should come no surprise when I say happiness is simply getting what you want or having your desires fulfilled. Meaningfulness is achieving a valued sense of one's self and one's purpose within the larger context of life and their community. Many people find that being a manager doesn't make them happy. But being a manager can be one of the greatest avenues to a meaningful life. As I said, a lot of these things you can take away and apply to your real life. So don't let unhappiness or a lack of meaning be a downfall, be too much of a challenge out of these challenges. Every manager faces these challenges. Make sure that you can handle those. Now let's look at career readiness. Career readiness is probably a new term for you, and this is just um, a term that represents the extent to which you possess the knowledge, the skills, and attributes that are desired by potential employers. Employers and graduates and people that are looking for jobs a lot of times disagree about the levels of career readiness. This is known as a skills gap. According to many employers, the three largest gaps were in critical analytical thinking and written communication and in locating organizing and evaluating information skills that are very very important to your employers make sure that you understand these and so that when you go into a potential interview or entering a new field that you know that employers are looking for these skills and that you can bring those effectively to them. Now I want to talk about this model of career readiness. Are you ready? And there are different characteristics uh, that are very prominent here. So with this model of career readiness now you know you're ready. You know the first one obviously is that of knowledge. Basic knowledge employers expect employees to possess. Make sure you have that you're not going to take a job for something you don't have the fundamentals for or else you're going to fail very quickly and knowledge is going to be formed from not just academic knowledge but also practical knowledge that you've gained in life the next one I want to talk about is that of soft skills I've mentioned this before these are interpersonal or people skills that are needed for success at your place of work these are becoming increasingly important as companies outsource and automate very routine tasks Another one here that you want to make sure you're ready with is that of attitudes. These are learned predispositions towards any given subject. Make sure that your attitude meets that of the work environment. And then there are a lot of other characteristics um, that prompt positive impressions among others and help you effectively adapt to a personal and work related changes. Resilience. This is the ability to bounce back and forth from adversity and to sustain yourself when faced with a challenge. Research shows that it's a very key trait for successful people. Having a general sense of professionalism is another one that's a very important characteristic. Um, having a strong work ethic, uh, personal adaptabil adaptability, self-awareness, openness to change and self-efficacy. Now if I go back up here to attitudes I wanted to 
go into that a little bit more because um, attitude is also going to include such things as ownership or accepting responsibility. We see this with a lot of people. You can probably think of some right away where you've been in situations and people just don't want to accept responsibility. This is a great readiness skill to have so that you are going to be what an employer is looking for. Being able to act, accept responsibility and take that in stride. Self-motivation. This is another attitude that employers are looking for. Proactive learning orientation. Showing commitment to the organization and to the goals of the organization. Uh, just being positive and take, having a positive approach towards things. And then career management. These are all some of those attitudes that people are looking for when it comes to employers. So take this model of career readiness. All these different skills and pieces and know that when you're wanting to become an effective manager, going into being part of a work organization. These are things that employers are looking for as well as those people that are in the organization already. Well, now let's look at developing career readiness. How do you develop that? What do you need? Well, there are six different ways that you can develop your career readiness. And the first one is building self-awareness. Another one is obviously to learn from educational activities. Another way of developing your career readiness is to model others that are possessing the targeted competencies that we've mentioned. Another thing you want to do is learn from all of your on-the-job activities. The fifth way to develop your career readiness is to seek experience from different groups and organizations. And the final way that I want to mention is just to experiment to see if you're ready. Now, there are three keys to success in so managing your career readiness. And it is your responsibility to manage your career. Don't count on others. And personal reflection, motivation, commitment, and experimentation are going to be essential to this. Everything is surrounded by the willingness because for you to be ready and to be able to manage this and to be successful you have to be willing you need to bring together those KSAOs and that's the knowledge skills attitudes and those other characteristics you need to be willing to develop your targeted competencies as I mentioned you need to be able to be willing to experiment and to evaluate your process success is achieved by following this process and we can define a process as a series of actions or steps followed to bring about some type of desired result. Have a plan. Put together that plan to achieve those goals, manage it, and be able to evaluate that. You are the only person that can be responsible for managing your career and making sure that you are successful. So make sure that you do everything you can to make sure that you're ready to go into an organization and understand what it is to be an exceptional manager. I know I've given you guys a lot of information. I hope you found some of this helpful, maybe triggered some information you already knew and brought it back to the surface and hopefully inspired you to do a little bit more research on management. Thank you for following along and good luck.